Lash, and I'm here inside the Hub Culture Pavilion, inside the Ice House, where it's actually warm. Uh, I'm here with Lawrence Wintermeyer, the CEO of Innovate Finance. Now, we've been talking about AI. I'd like to see how it applies to, um, to FinTech. What are some of the trends that you're seeing right at the moment that you think will continue into 2017? Well, AI is probably the biggest technical trending topic in fintech here at Davos and into 2017. And it covers a lot of different areas, both in the retail and the capital market side of things. So the sort of AI solutions that we're seeing from our members in the retail space are around personal financial management. So these are applications that help people meet goals, like save for things, mm -hmm. save for holidays, save for objectives, by making them very aware of their spending habits, their biases, and really helping them focus on achieving goals. And quite often these are people who don't have excess savings for investments. Mm -hmm. So we think that this is re a really important part of uh, you know, financial development. Clearly on the investment management end uh, for retail clients, uh, pensions, any any aspect of investment. I'm sure you've heard of robo advice. Mm -hmm. We're getting into robo two, uh, which is really the algorithms that help clients better understand the diversification and risks of their portfolio, where money's moving, and how to balance it. So I I'd watch out for that. On the cap market side, I think one of the most uh, interesting trends we saw break out last year in May is what we call man and the machine. Mm -hmm. So this is where uh, intelligent algorithms are sitting beside traders to really help remove personal or institutional bias in decisions that they're making and ultimately help them make better decisions, deliver better returns for in investors. Uh, at the end of the, the sort of AI continuum, you get something called RegTech. And, and this is where, in a real-time way, compliance or regulators, uh, compliance teams or regulators are really plugged in in an online way to the system and are able to monitor in a compliant way the behaviors that are going on on the trading floor mm -hmm. or in the bank credit area, particularly as it relates to compliance legal governance. Um, so I, I think it's probably going to be one of the most important things, not just into 2017, but over the next decade in fintech. And how do you think it will change the jobs, the sort of spectrum of jobs that we see within financial markets? Well, a lot of people talk about the displacement of jobs and, well, what's going to happen, for example, to financial advisors mm -hmm. if everything is in a robo-advice, and um, I, I just don't see that. I, you know, I, I think there's always a need for personal advice, mm -hmm. um, and I have a difficult time seeing that going away. It's just your preference, I think, uh, as a consumer and what works best for you. What we found quite often with personal financial advice, particularly in the UK, is it's just too expensive for most people. Mm -hmm. So we call it not downwardly compatible. And that's where technology can really help. Uh, but quite, quite often, and particularly in the case uh, of uh, affluent and wealthy clients, the advice market's pretty strong. So, so quite often, the technology isn't displacing current jobs. It's enhancing your ability or increasing the, perform the access the performance or the oversight of what's going on. Just a question about Brexit. Uh, I wonder how you think the uh, fintech world will change as a result of what we've seen coming from Theresa May, coming from the decisions or perhaps not the decisions yet on what Brexit will look like. Well, uh, we, we listened to the Prime Minister yesterday and I think uh, regardless of what way you go on Brexit, soft Brexit, hard Brexit, remain or leave, I think everyone is delighted that there's greater clarity on it, including the, the, the markets. Um, we still have to get through it and, and what it means, and uh, there's no doubt that that is a very complex process. Our own fintech community, we polled on uh, the, 27th of, uh, uh, the 27th of June, just following the referendum, and broadly, uh, the number one issue for the fintech community was, can we make sure that the UK remains attractive to foreign investment capital, and can we maintain our access to talent and to passporting? And it looks like the passport and talenting schemes uh, may very well uh, you know, become constrained under any Brexit situation. So uh, we're going to survey the members again. We've sent out another survey today following the Prime Minister's statement uh, yesterday and get the sentiment on their reaction to things. 
Um, I suspect that there are many schemes going on, including with the City of London in London, to, to focus on how to offer um, tech visas or visas for STEM, mm -hmm. um, you know, STEM employees, which are really at the heart of, of you know, keeping a modern digital uh, industrial culture going anyway. But it remains to be seen. Uh, the one thing I, I would say is that uh, Brexit actually doesn't affect fintech from a technical perspective of passporting in that most fintechs don't actually passport um, in, into, the, uh, into the European Union. So, um, you know, from that, that, that technical area, the, the uh, impact is actually marginal and, you know, most fintechs are just getting on with things. Laura, thank you so much for stopping by the Hub Culture Pavilion. Absolute pleasure. Here in Davos, and I'm Edie Lush.